In this exercise you work in two different environments. The first is the project environment and you have to be in a project before you can do the energy analysis. You use the levels in the project to stipulate where the floors are that are in your building. The second environment is where you create a mass family. And to do a conceptual mass family, you use a template specific to that purpose. In that, you can draft either a finished building form or you could create multiple uh, volumes representing different activities that you then assemble inside the project environment, which is what's shown in this exercise. So we're going to assemble a school building using typical spaces. Uh, the idea here is if you have an architectural reference like a geometric handbook or Newfort's architect's data, you, you could design or you could draft forms representing a typical classroom and then maybe a typical assembly room. You then take these individual forms, you could use them in multiple projects, but you can assemble different options for the layout of the building itself. You'll then be able to work with that model for certain design goals like um, analysing the energy or looking at airflow around the buildings. So in the big picture here what we're doing is at the modelling stage you're creating um, or importing mass families which you're then going to combine in the project environment. So while you're in a conceptual design phase, you may want to actually assemble a project using uh, pre-built families, mass families. So what, what I've done is I said make a new project, I'm now going to say save it. I'm going to point to my folder and I'm going to use the same name that I had before. Uh, I've got a file there called school project. I'm just going to overrule, overwrite it, which is going to overwrite it with this empty, empty file. So. I've got now in the project environment, school project, I've got these uh, levels that represent the floors. I've got planes, ground plane to draft on and two vertical planes. But what I want to show is two techniques to get families, which are mass families, and bring them into my actual project environment. So one, one technique would be that if you have a mass family, you can say open it up, open the family. I'm going to point to my correct folder. And you might want to group them under things like activities, where each activity might be kind of a zone within a building, maybe assembly area, classroom, corridor, something like that. Might be individual building forms, or might be forms like shed roof or uh, or uh, hip roof or something like that. So what I'm going to do is just start with by picking the mass family called administration. I'm going to open it up, I'm going to bring it in. So it's, it's now open, I've opened the mass family. So there's two different environments, the project environment and the mass family, and the mass family environment here, so, which is the conceptual massing environment. I'm going to load this into the project, and now I've got my mass form there, and I'm just going to park it in, the, in, that, in that location at the back. Let me switch on the shading, uh, because I color-coded the, the activities with different colors. Now the other way would be under the assembly, sort of under the application menu, I can go down and say uh, import load family, point to my folder where the families were, the activities folder. And what I'm going to do is just uh, use the shift key to pick one, shift key, pick the one at the end of the list, load them all in. So th the difference here is it doesn't come up with the family attached at the end of your cursor but it puts the family in the project browser where you can then access them and bring them into the project. So if I look down here at say the gymnasium um, or the assembly hall, let's use the assembly hall. So I'm going to grab the assembly hall and I can drag it from the browser into here. I can find the location and park it into my, my project. The other, the other way I could do this, let's do this with the classrooms. I'm going to drag the classrooms in, let's just say I've got three of them. Um, I can use my favourite uh, tool here which is the uh, align tool and I could say to that face align this and to that face align this. So I'm actually using it like a move command 
um, with the face that I pick is the stationary face and then I'm picking the face that should move to align with it and I'm not locking it, I'm just using it as a move command so um, face to face here. Another way of course of doing this would be just to use the move tool but if I switch from shaded to say wireframe then it would be easier for me to say pick the classroom form, move, pick it up at a location that I can see and move it to the location that I want to move it to and then I'm going to switch back to shading just so you can see uh, what it looks like and the last thing I just want to point out is that all of these actually have parameters built into them you see them on the properties palette here that you know if I wanted to I could go up and actually drive the size of those to make them different uh, different sizes I'm doing control Z to get back so the last example is I'm going to bring in a corridor uh, here bring it in I'm going to park it at the uh, back end of my building here so I'm going to use the align to say align those faces and align uh, these faces and this would be m more often than not trial and error but I happen to know that the length is 230 feet so when I do the this I can see that I got the full length of my my classroom so that's actually like the first way of taking mass families and assembling them to make a building <laughs>